Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at how to do some delta H calculations. So enthalpy change. Now you should be aware of the definitions of what enthalpy and enthalpy change are. If you're not, go and look them up. Now the two equations what you'll need to do this, they're fairly straightforward and they should be picking you up marks in the exam. If you can do an ideal gas equation, then you can do these. So Q equals MC delta T, MCAT as most people call it, help you remember it. And the delta H itself, so how to work that out, once you've worked out Q, just divide it by the number of moles. Now a few things to point out with this, some of the common errors, obviously what everything stands for first, Q. That is the energy change of the environment. Make a note of that. Because it's important when we come to look at the mass, it is the mass of the environment which you put into this calculation. So when we do a practice one in a few minutes, when we are burning a fuel and heating up some water, then yes, you should have guessed it, it is the mass of the water which you put in here, not the mass of the fuel. Environment. C, specific heat capacity. You will always be told that. Typically water, 4.18, but like I said, it will always be given to you. And delta T, change in temperature. By definition with C, it should be change in Kelvin, but it makes absolutely no difference whether or not your change is in Celsius because from 30 Celsius to 60 Celsius a 30 Celsius change whereas if you add 273 onto both numbers it is still a 30 Kelvin change so the actual change makes no difference you just plunk that number in there for working out delta H once you've worked out the energy change to the environment then we will flip the symbol here we will explain why in a moment the number of moles. This is the number of moles of the chemical. So that is where your fuel that has been burnt, in the example we're going to do, will be put in. So remember, environment, water in there. So let's do an example. I'll leave that equation up and I'm just going to rewrite delta H out of the way. So a typical exam style question will look something like this. Now I have no idea if this is accurate, I'm just picking numbers off the top of my head. So if you look it up in a book and the value for burning methane comes out utterly different, then that is why. So the way to start it off, we are looking for Q first of all. So Q equals, right, what is the environment? Is it the one gram of methane or is it the 30 grams, because one cubic centimetre of water pretty much one gram at the standard conditions we deal with. Good, should have guessed it. 30 grams here. Specific heat capacity of water, as I said, will always be given to you, 4.18. And the temperature change. Now read the question, it didn't ask us to do any maths here, it taught us. Heated by 16 degrees C. That is how hard it is. So, put those into a calculator and work them out. So, I will just do that now. 30 times 4.18 times 16. So, come up with an answer of 2006.4. This will be 
in joules. It is an energy. So what this means is that 2006.4 joules of energy was provided to the environment. In other words, this lighter, if I burn this fuel and the flame comes off, if I've got my hand above the flame, it's starting to hurt now, then that is the energy being provided to the environment. The environment in this case was my hand. So once you've worked out Q, we want to look at delta H, the enthalpy change in the actual system, the chemical system. Notice here the value is positive. Why? Look at what happened to the temperature of the environment. It rose. More energy was given to the environment. Q is a measure of the energy. So the energy here is positive. Now, we want to start looking at the chemical system. You should be aware of the law of conservation of energy. That is, if we imagine we have a chemical system and the environment, Energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. So, if 2006.4 joules of energy is provided to our environment, then exactly 2006.4 joules of energy must have been lost from our chemical system. Notice exact balance. Bonus point for if anybody knows who John Doe is in a film where he was the bad guy. So, delta H. The Q value we had before, 2006.4. Now you can choose to insert a negative symbol now. Because, as we said before, this is now looking at the energy in the system. The system lost energy. It doesn't matter whether you put it in now or if you just put it in at the end of the question. But remember, if it is an exothermic reaction, delta H should be what? Negative. If it is an endothermic reaction, delta H should, vice versa, be positive. You will lose marks if you forget that. Usually you'll be granted only one mark out of three. Even if all of your working out is right and your answer is right, it is effectively the, the opposite as such. So 2006.4. Now we said we had one gram of methane. So one gram, math. The MR of methane, 16. So we are going to divide that by 116. So again, get your calculator out, 2006.4 divided by 116. You will always get big numbers for this, beware of that. Do not be surprised though if they are in the hundreds of thousands or even millions. So the answer I've got here it's pretty low, but as I said, I just made these numbers up. I've got minus 32,102.4 joules per mole. Notice where the per mole has came from. We are dividing by a mole here. If you want, you can convert to kilojoules. So... To three significant figures. And there we have an enthalpy calculation. 